Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Explain This. I'm with the star of the show, Robin Riddle. Robin, how's it going? Doing great. How about you? I'm doing wonderful. And today's topic, I, I'm super interested in because you are the gut health queen. <laughs> and today, guys, we're going to do an Explain This video on the GI map. You guys have heard us talk about it. You've done a Common Sense MD episode with Dr. Yeah. Rogers on it. Today, we're going to explain it. Yeah. So, so go ahead. Wanna, do, GI map. Dive in a little deeper here. Um, okay. So the GI map is a one-time stool collection test that I recommend very, very often to mm -hmm. patients. Um, basically, any complaints of anything gut-related at all, um, constipation, diarrhea, bloating, gas, abdominal pain, um, if you've ever been diagnosed with IBS, IBD, anything like that. I usually recommend that people do a GI map because as we say all the time, all health comes from the gut. If mm -hmm. your gut is not healthy and happy, nothing else will be either. The thyroid can't function appropriately. The, the brain can't function appropriately. You can have um, skin rashes and disruptions and things like that. Uh, it's a the, Anything in the gut can be a huge trigger behind autoimmune disorders. Like the gut's got to be on par mm -hmm. for everything else. And, and I'm assuming that this is one of the most uh, in-depth gut uh, tests slash results that, that yes. we do at least. Yes, it is. Um, and I have patients tell me often, oh, well, like I had a colonoscopy and they didn't find anything and mm -hmm. they did an endoscopy and it was normal and they did a stool test and they said everything was fine. Um, I have not to date seen a actual like GI doctor or primary care do anything that comes close to comparing to the the kind of tests that we're doing. Mm. They're just not getting that root cause the way that we do. Well, what does the results look like out of curiosity? Like, is it just, is it like, I know the Cleveland Heart Panel is super yeah. in-depth. It's kind of what I'm envisioning yeah. just from your <laughs> gut health. So it's like five pages. First page goes through looking at pathogenic bacteria. So that's the worst of the worst stuff that we don't want to see there. So that's looking for E. coli and C. diff and salmonella and things like that, that absolutely we don't want to see there. Mm -hmm. um, the second page goes in and looks for H. pylori, which is an extremely common infection found in the stomach. H. pylori goes underdiagnosed so commonly, and it causes all kinds of issues. Um, so abdominal pain, reflux, uh, belching gas. Some people have um, where they feel full all the time, like they have a hard time eating because they just feel full. Uh, but untreated, it can lead to damage in the esophagus, like Barrett's esophagitis, which then can lead to cancer. So H. pylori is a big deal. Yes. Um, and it's not, it's traditionally not treated great. Um, so this area, especially, there's a very high clarithromycin resistance for H. pylori. Um, it's just a known thing around this area, but a lot of doctors will still use a clarithromycin-based medication to try to treat the H. pylori, which means like, oh, hey, even if you were diagnosed and you were treated, mm, pretty good chance that that did not go away. Is H. pylori something that you would know? Like, can could could you talk to somebody just with their symptoms and know that they have H. pylori? Not necessarily because there are symptom okay. overlaps there, but there's definitely things that give me clues. Okay. Um, and then I'm providing more education behind H. pylori because a lot of people don't know it can be very easily transmitted. Oh. Um, sharing drinks, you know, kissing your partner, anything like that. So if I diagnose someone with H. pylori and I'm treating them, I'm always recommending that their partner also be tested okay. and treated because um, otherwise you're just going to end up infected again. It's, it's very easy to share. Um, so after H. pylori, then it looks at all your beneficial bacteria. So it's looking for the good stuff that we want to be there and looking at the balance of all of that to see if we have enough of the good stuff. Um, then it goes into what's called your opportunistic bacteria and it's looking for dysbiosis. So that section is looking for all kinds of different bacteria that it's not uncommon for them to be present, but in small amounts. When we start to see a lot of them or see big amounts of them, that's when we know that we have an issue. Can you explain dysbiosis? Uh, I know it's, I, when I think dysbiosis, I think the gut. Yeah. Is it just like a, a gut, guts, d gut disorder? It's just an imbalance. Okay. So too much bad, not enough good. And it usually results from the good being knocked out for some reason, and then the bad starts to flourish. Um, and so, I mean, it's stuff like um, staph and strep, mm. like very common types of bacteria. Uh, we just don't want too much of them. Okay. Um, it also has a little section that's looking for those opportunistic bacteria that can be known autoimmune triggers. So there's certain types of bacteria that we know if we have high amounts, it can be triggered 
triggers for rheumatoid arthritis or things like that. Um, so it actually ha even has a little autoimmune section that it goes through. Um, then we look for yeast, which is candida. It's a naturally occurring yeast in the body, but we look at different types of yeast to see if we have any overgrowths going on there. Um, looks for parasites, protozoa, and worms. I find parasites all the time. Contaminated food and water sources is the most common cause, but we'll find little parasites that are hanging around causing issues. Um, and then it looks for intestinal health markers. So it's telling us, do you have enough digestive enzymes? Are you breaking down the fats in your food? Um, is there occult blood in the stool? Is there high levels of inflammation? Um, are we, it, it looks at an immune marker for um, a reaction to gluten, which if we have an elevation on that, I usually recommend that people also go have celiac blood work done just to make sure we're not missing a bigger diagnosis. But you can have a, a negative response to gluten without being celiac. Mm. Um, looks for zonulin, which is how we detect leaky gut syndrome, um, and then calprotectin, which is one of our major inflammatory markers, and looks at the immune system of the gut, your secretory IgA. So how healthy and how strong and robust is the immune system of the gut? Because if that's compromised, the gut can't help fight off the infections going on, and then that also can compromise your full body immune system as well. That is an extensive test. It's very extensive. Goodness, <laughs> like what sort of plans do you put patients on? I'm assuming it's very, uh, it, there's a wide range. There is, there okay. is. It's very customizable, and honestly, it depends on patient preference. If mm -hmm. they want to go fully natural, fully prescriptive, kind of a combination of the two, um, I have different herbs and and, and natural antivirals and antibacterials and all that that can treat everything that I see in there. Okay. I have a natural way to hit all of it if people prefer to, to do it that way. The natural is always a little bit slower. It's less harsh on the system, but it's slower, takes a little bit longer. Most of my natural antimicrobials, you're on them consistently for at least four to six weeks to knock out whatever infections we find or whatever it may be. Um, then again, I have, I have different types of prescriptive agents that can help get rid of things faster and then we just focus on the the rebuild after we after we have to use those um, but it is it's a very customized plan it always results um, in probiotics everybody needs to be on a probiotic I don't care who you are I'm going to tell you to start a probiotic um, just how much of a probiotic you need may differ um, and then from there we just take it how many infections do you have how do we need to treat the overlap I create a big plan and then based on that plan is also how we decide how we're going to follow up it's not uncommon for me to refer some things out to GI mm -hmm. um, so if I see like really elevated calprotectin levels, I'm often going to retest and probably refer to GI because that can be a sign of a bigger issue. Um, if I see high occult blood in the stool, I'm probably going to refer to GI for, for some testing if you haven't already seen them, just because those are things that could be a bigger issue that we absolutely don't right. want to be missing. Right. It, for for the people, you know, when I think of a gut disorder, I think, you know, my, my stomach's hurting, my bowel movements aren't normal. Yeah. Are there any other signs of for the listeners here that might say, I, okay, I might need a GI map um, if I'm wanting to... Uh, try to figure out the root cause of something. Yeah. So, I mean, even something as simple as skin. I mean, mm. uh, in, in a in a one that we did with Andy, a video I did with Andy, we talked about his skin. So eczema and psoriasis, things like that, acne can actually be stemming from the gut. Mm. So anything that we're seeing on the outside, it's coming from something on the inside. Um, but yes. And so then um, chronic headaches actually can be gut related, gut and food related. Um, and then, like I had said, constipation, diarrhea, gas, bloating, your, your, your normal things that are going to draw attention. Yeah. Um, any of those are reasons to do this. And especially if you're the person that's had the runaround. You've been to all the doctors. They've all said it's normal or they don't know why or they give you some kind of just like hey, this is what it is and take this medicine for it, um, come to us for GMAP for root cause. It is not normal to not have a bowel movement for five days and yep. have to take a stimulant to have one. It's also not normal to run to the bathroom after every meal. Um, you don't have to live like that. We can, we can yeah. find root causes and fix things and really improve quality of life, but improve overall health. Now, 
what is the can you explain the process in terms of like how long does getting the test back take for yeah. people if, yeah. if they do decide to go this route yeah um so you pick up a test kit from any any of the offices we all have them um so uh, come purchase a test kit from us we show you how to use it it's not the most pleasant process in the world but it's a one-time thing so mm -hmm. you can manage it um stool is collected at home packaged at home and sent out um, you only ship these out on a monday through thursday because they're does need to be someone at the lab to receive the specimen whenever it gets there. Uh, we have started asking people if you're not in the Knoxville office, if you're with one of our other providers and they order a GI map, that you just call Knoxville and let us know when you have sent it in. That way it's on our radar to be mm. looking for those results as well. Um, generally, they tell us about a two week turnaround time. Um, so then at the end of that, most people set up an appointment with me to go over those. Yeah. I tend to be the one that reviews most of them. Um, and that can be on the phone if you're in one of the other offices, or it can be in person. Uh, and then we sit down and we we go over we go over all of that. And then, like I said, we create a plan from there as to when we need to follow up again. Now, is the GI map something that? needs to be repeated every other year if the, if you have a gut issue or is this kind of like a one time generally it's just a one time thing okay. i i have a really hard time talking people into ever repeating this because yeah. once they've been through it once they don't want to do that again yeah. um but also i there's a lot that i can do with those one time results and yes. if i'm getting the symptomatic relief that we want then i feel pretty confident that we have fixed the problem there yes. i the only times i really ever recommend a repeat would be at least 6 months after treatment was completed and only if we have persistent issues that we just can't figure out or new issues that start. Super fascinating. Yeah. The GI map. The GI map. Guys, we have explained it. Uh, excuse me. Robin has explained it. <laughs> she has explained the GI map today. Robin, thank you so much for doing that. Absolutely. Guys, thank you all for hanging out with us. You name it, we explain it. As always, we'll see you all next time. Don't go away.